coin hobby will fail if this continues to happen. Hey guys, it's Drew Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we'll be talking about part two of the big collection that we bought this week. We hope you guys enjoy. Let's get this video started. For those who don't know, we picked up a $40,000 coin collection this week. If you guys wanna watch part one of that video, make sure to click the link below. But we're gonna be showing you guys everything else that we picked up and why uh, why you might you know wanna stick around to the end because there's a lot of cool things to see. But on the way home from picking up this collection, me and Casey had a conversation about uh, what was the right thing to do. Um, and so what we felt good about the coin collection was that we paid very strong for the coins. We paid, um, I think, one of the top competing amounts in the whole hobby for what we would, uh, what others would pay. Um, and what does that really mean, and why um, is it important? So, there's a lot of coin dealers that have been around forever. There's a lot of people that have been in the coin space for a long time, and that gets them a little bit more comfortable in buying and selling and there's a lot of dealers out there that will only pay 40% of gray sheet, half of gray sheet. Um, they'll only pay 60% of gray sheet for great coins. And so uh, I think that if, as a hobby, as coin dealers, if we continue down that road of paying people half of what something's worth, um, it really will hurt the hobby to a point where they won't trust coin dealers. Coin dealers will be like snake oil salesmen and uh, you know, I understand people getting a good price for coins and them sitting on coins, but in, in a case like this, in this individualized case, these coins were really great. Um, they offered a good upside for us, but they also offered us coins that we could sell to higher end customers. And so why would I go into a room, sit at a man's table and offer him half of what something's worth? I just don't think that's fair. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know down below, but um, everything is in context to what you do with the deal that you have. You know, there's some things that you can't really pay strong for because there's no demand for them. But there are other things that you can pay strong for because there is a big demand. So it all really depends on the situation. But when it comes down to it, you're sitting across the table from somebody that needs your help, that wants to have faith in the hobby. Sometimes they lose money, sometimes they make money, but it all is dependent on you. You are the advocate for the coin business and the coin hobby. Don't be the reason why someone wants to leave the hobby. Be the reason why someone wants to stick in the hobby and pass that down to future generations. And so let's show you guys these coins. We hope you guys enjoy them. Um, they're definitely a lot of decent pieces. Alrighty, so we have this 42 proof set here that came out of the capital holder. And we have these really nice type coins, mostly barbers, but we'll show you them all right now. So. We had the collector send these in because he had free uh, he had free vouchers from the membership from PCGS. Let's start off with the bottom right here. So we have this 42 Proof 64 Red Lincoln scent. Just a decent coin overall. Has little toning spots to it, but definitely some nice red color. We have this Type 2 Proof Jefferson Nickel in 66. I like the look of this coin much more than the Type 1 but it's good to have both. And we have this Type 1 Proof 65 Jefferson Nickel. Got a little laziness to the coin, but still pretty decent. We have this Proof 66 Washington Quarter. Once again, a little haze. I think these holders kind of put haze on the coin, especially if they're held in kind of a little bit different areas in terms of heat. This coin, a uh, capital holder collection right here, of these six coins were purchased in Texas, and so most of the time, a lot of moisture can get to these coins, and that's where the haze comes in. And you're going to see that really on this 42 proof mercury dime in 67. Just a lot of haze to the coin, not screaming in terms of cameo contrast. And so, still a beautiful coin overall, mark free. This was the coin I was most excited about because I saw this raw before he submitted it. And this coin really almost screamed an 8 to me because there's not a lot of issues in the fields. And when you're looking at, um, you know, if the coin is close to an eight or not, you're looking at the breast plate and seeing if it's fully struck. And in this case, this one was. And so a graded proof 67 plus, has a little color to the obverse and a nice cameo look to the reverse. But that's all for the 42 proof set. Let's move on to these nice type coins. I have this 1906D Barber Half. 
I'm really getting into barber halves because they're a little bit tougher to find and they're still pretty affordable. And so this coin has a little haziness to it. The luster's not super incredible, but it is a, a Denver mint coin, a little bit tougher. We have this 1911 barber half. Definitely mark free, not a lot of issues. Has a little rim tone to the coin on both sides. And I do like this coin because we sold this coin to him. And so we, we bought this coin back for an affordable price. Not super attractive spots on the reverse of the coin, but that's okay. Then we have this 13D barber half dollar. It's graded MS63. It's CAC approved, definitely the nicest one of the bunch here by far. This one is gonna be the most premium just because when we talk about in other videos, barbers are really tough to find, CEC approved, and with nice eye appeal, and this one has both for sure. The next coin up here is this 1905 Proof Barber Half, very Proof 65, definitely a nice cameo look to the coin. Has a little haze behind the hat, which I think held it back. I mean, this coin, uh, just it's, it's stunning for sure. Has a little bit of an issue on the slab here. It's not on the coin. It's right next to the eagle's neck. But I mean, just, I mean, the eye appeal is next level. Then we have this 20 cent piece in Proof 63. Definitely uh, doesn't have a ton of eye appeal and is a little hazy, which is okay. It's got some spots also, but I mean, overall a decent coin, but not my favorite. Then we have this Proof 66 dime. It's got some nice color to the coin. It's rather mark free and has a strong strike. The luster is not incredible. But I want to see what CC thinks about this coin. So we're going to send this one in with the Proof 67 Plus Walker. And we're also going to send in a few more. But maybe we can video that when they come back. We have this 16D Barber Quarter with incredible luster on the obverse, which I think gave it the plus grade. CC approved. And uh, still really nice on the reverse as well. I think it has some gem luster, but just a few too many ticks. And that's what held it back from getting 64 or that gem grade. And so thank you guys for taking a look at these awesome coins that we picked up in that collection. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on uh, the situation that we talked about today. Have you run into a coin dealer where they just didn't really, it was almost, you know, too cheap. Or it was in a situation where you felt like, man, this hobby is just a bunch of people that want to take from others. I'd like to hear that down below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. I know this is a touchy subject, but I really would like to hear what your thoughts are. We'll see you guys in the next video.